right. Welcome to day 10 of the composition of this gratitude concert. And today I want it to be, uh, you know, because we've been doing a lot of talking, or I have, and, uh, and uh, as, as we're coming in now on day 10, you know, all these themes and ideas have really started to, to just exist on their own, on the piano, and I really want to come in and, and do a lot of playing today, and a lot of improvisation, and a lot of exploring, and then try to, so we sort of turn it on its head, I will try and play more, and then try to articulate what goes on in my head as I, as I proceed. So, we're gonna jump right into it today. The story that I wanted to base this composition on is something that uh, is a, is a, unfortunately, uh, you know, a lot of people are in, in the same uh, boat as uh, this lady. Um, and, uh, uh, and there is, and that is the downside of it, you know, because she suffers from a chronic illness, right? But on the upside, you find the exact same power and the exact, exact same drive. And all of these stories that I'm getting, it's, it's, you know, 99% of them are, you know, people remembering who they were and, and trying to invoke that in them, you know, I am still this passion, I am still this warrior. And immediately after I read this thing, and I know that we're sort of knee deep in going in and stealing from myths everywhere in an attempt to try and, and make this as universal as possible. You know, when I was, you know, maybe that's why, but when I read this, you know, I immediately thought about, uh, you know, um, and it might sound a little bit morbid, but I was thinking about the ancient graves. And, you know, before we got boring and Christian and, you know, just a casket, you know, before that, you know, when grave sites were exciting places where people were buried with their horses and their swords and, you know, their, you know, um, their friends and their slaves and, you know, horrible, but, uh, but a lot more interesting than, um, than, um, you know, these boring Christian graves that we have today. Albeit, you know, also crazy times, I'm sure, but I got this story. Um, Dear Martin, uh, talks a little bit about the project. She writes, I'm, I, and she starts out like this. I was, I was a strong and athletic 52-year-old uh, when my self-image burst. Now I am safe and warm, or soft and warm, in my day bed, three to four days a week. And I, and I believe a day bed is, is a sort of a chair that can move around, but it's a sort of a place where you can lie down also, which would be important for people with me, right? And, and, uh, and she writes, because I want to get out of my bed. She insists on getting out of the bed. You know? I, I insist on doing two trips of minimum 20 minutes with the dog. But sometimes that's not possible. I fight to keep my muscle strength and to retain my independence, to, to uh, go about in my car, on the bike, or walk on my own. That is my goal. And I'm grateful for all the days where I can get out of my bed, for the exciting books I can read, for the comfort shows, and... Um, all the wonderful times I experienced with old, loyal, and great friends. And isn't that amazing? Some people are lucky enough to have friends that stick around when things get tough. And she has three wonders, she calls them, must be her children, live their lives knowing what they deserve and what the lives that they want to have require of them. You know, and 
that's a wonderful feeling for 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 a mother, right? And um, and she had been hoping for this this window, this little window in time where she could be just focusing on herself, and uh, while her kids, you know, were out there in the world, and and then get back in the boat once the grandchildren come along, and she didn't anticipate falling ill at 52. But what I notice is, is you know, she, she, it's, it's really focused on, on strength, you know. She's a strong and athletic, you know, woman, um, all the way up to 52. She insists on going about and being out in the world, and, and she, uh, she's fighting to retain her muscle, her strength of muscle and I just thought of of this to be honest with you I just thought of this you know um, Viking you know um, you know they discover more and more the more and more of these graves that's interesting enough where we just thought it would be men buried there you know Viking graves and then they check out the DNA and lo and behold a bunch of these graves you know you know, it's women lying down there who were warriors. So, as in the saga, we have the shield maidens, you know. These are women going to war. And for some reason, when I read this story, I thought, you know, she was a warrior, you know, and, um, and, and, um, she's sort of looking back on what she was. And, and so that had me turn a little bit morbid. But maybe there is something cathartic there. In, in trying to imagine this, and forgive me if someone is going to get, you know, you know, thrown, you know, throw themselves overboard, you know, when, you know, from this approach, you know, that's just the way it is, because this is the idea that, that, you know, we see this woman, and now we imagine her ancient grave site of what she used to be. And this is just exploring this idea. And now what is in that grave, you know, this Viking grave maybe? What was she buried with there? Because there is something strange about that whole ancestral thing. And it's not something I'm usually very obsessed with, but it's sneaking into this story and I think it's sort of the universal and the mythical thing and that thing we're talking or I'm talking about constantly about being part of the big picture and so the ancestral element really becomes something and we do all look back at our lives and we think what will our, what will my life be you know after this is this thing is over you know what will the legacy be and all and maybe it could be an interesting little uh, play of thought to to try and imagine you know what would my grave be like and maybe in doing that, we, we retain sort of the, the essence of what we are, right? Because maybe this is the thing. When we look at a warrior grave, for instance, you know, we look at what happened before they were slain, right? We look at what the essence of these people were, their contribution in a way, their power, and... Um, and then, you know, they get an axe to the head or get decapitated by a long sword or get an arrow in their back. And then they die and then they go into a grave, you know, but you don't bury them with an axe in their head. You don't bury them, you know, with their last, you know, you know, um, you know, you don't reference the last second in their life. You reference what they did leading up to that point, the essence. And so maybe there could be something worth diving into and going into this grave site. And even though we're still alive, just imagining, for instance, this lady, sorry for putting this on you if you're watching this, but you know, Let's go into the grave and see what was in there. What are you? What are you made of? And just explore what happens to us if we allow ourselves to think that. If I was a Viking warrior, you know, 
from a time with more exciting grave sites. What would they look like, you know, and why? Just investigate that. And so that is the idea that I come into today with, you know, on and not try to do and to overcomplicate things, but just try to dive into the realization of our mortality and allow ourselves to meditate on what was. And I, and I just want to touch on this last thing, right, that we do look at our ancestors and we think, do I contain that as well? No. Do I, and it's both, it's good and bad, right? And now if we could look at ourselves, you know, maybe we could sort of invoke some of that, you know, power, the good stuff that we contained before we got an ax to the head. And maybe we can get back to it at some point. If we meet time on the top of the mountain, like little Hermes. And, um, and so, I just want to play, you know, I really just want to play today. And I want to start, of course, we have the main theme, and just to hold on to that. <laughs> we have tons of tons of variations on that thing by now, but I uh, uh, we need to come in and and invoke the darkness a little bit and have some half notes in there, you know. And maybe remember our little fantasy interval from the ox and connect that a little. getting a, f a stupid idea, introducing a little bit of fun, you know, like a waltz of the dead, you know, you know, the ghost coming out of the grave, talking about its life. Sorry. something there that we can hold on to and then and then of course we had going back in in um, in the earlier themes you know we 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 came in on this old standard for death you know and funerals and requiem-esque atmospheres and this thing you know and let's play with that too Let's just try and hold it up here and not be too much of a cliché. Just to remember death, you know, and just remember it's there. And then we want to come into her power. Let's move this theme around a little bit. No, if we have this, which is more from the perspective of the relatives, maybe. Okay, so let's come down here and see what happens. That's powerful. 
beautiful, right? And um, that also reminds us a little bit about the captain looking out, you know, looking out into the world. There is a sort of a forward momentum in this interval, you know, this big third, you know, and that's powerful. So that would be the same in a way, like. And now we just go. You know? Find a little bit of a warrior spirit in there. times maybe
the children's theme, you know. to create uh, an interchanging thing between coming in to the inevitably melancholy feeling that you must get when you remember your old strength, you know, and you look at your arm and, and you don't have that right now, you know, there is a melancholy in there. And we need to just, you know, not dwell too much in that, but be in the courage of thinking about the power that we originally contain. And that's all human beings. Just because we don't have that strength anymore doesn't mean someone else doesn't. But everyone wants to contribute, right? Everyone wants to be powerful. time, you know, if she could just get a little bit of that strength back, you know, before the grandkids arrives, you know. So Hermes run in to meet time.
and trying to play around these new themes and melodies and seeing what happens if I merge them into what we already have and the things and the other themes that simply reminds me, you know, of the thing we have today. I'm just going to continue on for a little bit and not talk too much. it into Hermes running up. Something could be working there.
how, how um, I like the plasticity of the whole thing. I like that there is, there is already in the themes, in the, one thing that I'm coming to like now is this progression upwards from the captain. Because it sort of acts like a neutralizer of sorts. I feel like whenever we come out and do something, go into the extreme emotions, come in and try and, and capture remorse, death, from a relative perspective, uh, or from, you know, the melancholia of, of remembering, you know, what ones were, and, and we throw all these emotions in there, and then when we come back into to that formation, it's like there is a neutralize, neutralizing effect there that I really like, and I think it's important to come in and constantly, uh, you know, smell the coffee beans, right? And, and um, I think that's so important because otherwise we sort of get too full of ourselves, or at least I do. I get too full of myself in, in some area or another, and we have to remember that universal aspect that it, it, um, if it becomes, if it becomes, uh, you know, we need an, uh, a neutralizing position in a way to clean the palate to come into the other stories and the other emotions. And I think it works really well, and I'm, I'm very pleased, you know, um, that we can come from, you know, just um, the banality in this death theme, right, that, that we all know, you know, it's been used forever. Now we can use that same theme to describe her strength, right? Grand, you know. I think in that grave, you know, a huge axe and maybe ten horses, you know. And then the melancholia and the beauty of what life can be. from here, sort of back in the wheel, you know.
like how that works. I really do. Okay. And um, and so this is coming in, and, and maybe you know, right now it's sort of the mind just springs out into the other themes. And, serves a shot in this epic situation that is life, right? And it's so important to find those plateaus, you know, we can just ponder and harmony and looking out and seeing what happens outside, you know, the structure of things. It's pretty harmonic midst of the whole chaos thing and that's consciousness sneaking in like talk, we were talking about yesterday the subject coming in making sense of it all it's just a uh, human consciousness right you know if we, if we just sp sprung in a new life form that never evolved through space and time and it just took a look at things, then maybe the universe, the cosmos and everything would simply be a pile of weirdly constructed sand and it wouldn't make any sense, you know. It's because we go in with our subject that we find the beauty in those two little birds flying above the ox and the plowing of the fields, the structures, the patterns, the gestures the stories, that we understand stories, that we are these storytelling things. a little Sunday meditation, you know, and below this whole thing, you know, is the grave. Maybe there, maybe somewhere else, but it is there, and we're all going into it, and today was just an invitation to try and imagine an exciting grave. Exciting in that it shows what sort of life was lived and put something into that, you know, maybe, you know, this, I'm all for whatever religion people, you know, adhere to, but, you know, it is absolutely, you know, you know, the Christian grave is a boring grave and it tells nothing about who you were, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we should start to get some more horses in there. You know, so people in the future could see what we were all about. You know, and put some honor into to the fact that we're here. You know, and I think in many ways that, you know, the boring way in which we're buried, just sort of rant about it is, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it's a part of that big excuse, you know. So sorry for being here. I apologize, me leaving a footprint and everything. Of course, I'm not saying we shouldn't take care of the planet. I'm just saying we should be proud to be here and proud to be alive, you know, no matter the circumstance, you know. There is something that I discovered 
recently when writing music is that in a weird way I can only write as good as I like myself <laughs> and it's a little bit of a funny thing to say but it's true you know I can literally sit there at the piano and and you know you plop out some you know because this is what I'm worth today What am I doing to myself? What is that gibberish that I'm sitting there, you know? And that's because, you know, in a weird way, some days you can think, you know, I'm really not worthy of writing something that's exciting because maybe I'm not exciting. Maybe I'm not really, you know, I shouldn't be too proud of myself. And that's just bullshit, you know? We absolutely should be. <laughs> something that can create an impact instead of some insignificant little, you know, wisping out here, you know. Let's try and describe the big things again and put some pride into this stuff instead of being these walking excuses, you know. Should the big stuff just be reserved for Hollywood or what, you know? What is it, you know? What are we doing, you know? Let's raise some statues you know, again. Let's not be these sad, sad little excuses, you know. I'm so sick of it. Because you look at people who come into life with massive potential and they run for it and they're driven and passionate and then they get struck by illness, you know. And now they're forced to be lying there still, you know, not able to go out and exercise their potential. And imagine being them and then looking at people being walking excuses for themselves in the world. Sorry I'm here, sorry about my footprint, you know. You know, let's just do minimalism, you know. God, you know. So this is, let's just call this, you know, Furious Sunday, you know. And let's write some big stuff instead. and Take it out of Hollywood. I love Hollywood, but let's come on, you know. Let's tell these stories all over the place, the big stuff. You know, let's own it, this life. I'm stopping, I'll stop myself now before this goes too far. I think I got my point across. So this is it for today. I'm sorry for being so morbid these recent days and going into death, but death is a part of it all and we need to deal with those stories too. And if we're smart and I think if we do it in an honest way, then, you know, we can find massive strength in our mortality. So that's it for today. I thank you and I hope to see you tomorrow for day 11. Take care. <laughs>